purpose of the interview is to celebrate the Choose to Challenge theme of um, International Women's Day 2021. Um, and talking to you, Louisa Wall, MP, about um, having the courage to challenge, which you've done for a very, very large part of your career and your life. And um, we're thrilled that you've given us the time. Uh, it's great to have you here. Thank you. Pleasure. Um, in 2012, um, you were the Member of Parliament who sponsored the Marriage Amendment Bill that ultimately passed into law, I think, from memory in 2013. Um, you might be interested, that was the only time I've tuned back into Parliament in that first <laughs> five years since I left was to watch that vote. Um, was, it, was it a difficult decision for you to sponsor the bill, perhaps rather than waiting for someone else to? Or what, what drove you to spearhead it, Louisa? Um, well, firstly, thank you for the opportunity. I think um, Choose to Challenge is at, because we have to choose to challenge things that are happening in our world that we don't agree with. Mm -hmm. um, but fundamentally, um, you need mandate. And I, and I need to stress that because I was the um, Member of Parliament for Manurewa, but I'd also been allocated the responsibility of chairing Labour's Rainbow Caucus. And so we had a, a manifesto commitment. We went into the election saying we would uh, introduce marriage equality or equal marriage before the law. Um, but it's also about timing. Um, and if we remember back, Barack Obama was running for his uh, second term. Um, and it caused global interest, including here in New Zealand. But for a lot of people, it wasn't a priority. And therein gave me uh, an opportunity through my mandate of chairing Labour's Rainbow Caucus to draft a bill and to start engaging in the public discourse. I won't say it was plain sailing. Uh, there were people in my caucus who didn't think it was a good topic because it was uh, necessarily going to be a confrontational you know, discussion and debate. But I have to say right from the beginning, I never doubted that we could do it. Um, mm. and, but I also think part of it was the framing and the framing mm. actually was about the state. The state is discriminating against New Zealand citizens. It's the state's role to issue marriage licenses. And why should anyone else care if consenting New Zealand adults choose to get married, um, who they marry, where they marry, how they marry? So it was actually a very simple conversation to have with New Zealanders. And I believe we are fair-minded. And when we're presented with the facts, and the fact is and was, that the New Zealand state, well, our government, was discriminating against hard-working Kiwis who, if you're lucky enough to find that one person that you want to formalise a relationship with and, and create a family, why would anyone stand in the way of that? And uh, yeah. That's right. But you also That's have to right. believe, I think, when you choose to challenge something or choose to change something, it's not just about highlighting the issue. You actually have to have a solution and then create a team around you that can help mobilise the support. So for me, there was a teams across the parliament. Um, we formed a cross-party group. We had teams yeah. of, of our LGBT community working hard in the major cities, so in Auckland and Wellington and Christchurch, Dunedin, and, and then... We really engaged with young people. I, and to be honest, now looking back, I think that was the defining part of our campaign because we were speaking to the youth, to the future, yeah. and that this really was about changing and making a fit-for-purpose regime in New Zealand that allowed future generations to access, you know, the institution of marriage. We can understand historically why older generations had an issue because, you know, up until 1986... Um, it was illegal um, mm. to be a, to be mm. gay or a gay man in mm. New Zealand. We actually sent people to jail. So, yeah, I think when you choose something, though, you have to um, believe you can make a difference, and and then just it's one foot in front of the other, and you just walk through the process. Did you did you um, at at any point um, did you hesitate at any point? Did you think? No. But you can't great. hesitate. It's a bit like playing a, a sports game. Um, you know, things happen in front of you and you have to take the gap. You just yeah. have to, And then once you've got the gap, you just have to burst through there and your ultimate goal is the try line. And you, you never think about anything, somebody catching you or that doesn't enter your no. mind. And I think if it does, 
then you haven't got the fun foundations right. And if you have that sort of rationale or values that drive your actions, no, you never hesitate. You never hesitate. And so that's, um, I really like that analogy. Um, what, what is it? What is it that makes you choose to challenge, Larissa? Uh, I, I think it's A, um, mandate, and B, responsibility, and yeah. taking the position seriously. And if you can do something about an issue, why wouldn't you? And there's nothing wrong with challenging, with asking questions, and then nothing's too hard to, to, to change if you have the will. But also, yeah. if you have, um, an, you, you need the ability, though, to create teams of people working at different levels in society for that change to occur, which, you know, which did happen with marriage. We had it at the political level, um, at, at a structural level. We had all the social justice entities advocating. And then right at the grassroots, we had a lot of young people engaging with their grandparents, with their parents. I mean... You know, I think that was the first time we'd ever had over 20,000 submissions on a bill. 21,533 wow. submissions. But there a lot you go. Of, yeah, but a lot of engagement with young people. And um, I think if you can get those networks of activism, um, who and they have to choose to engage too, right? Sure. So whatever, and we've seen it with climate change and young people getting mobilised. Mm -hmm. So it does depend on what it is, but it also depends on the why. Why are we doing mm -hmm. this? You know, we are wanting to create an equal world. We are wanting to make sure that we eliminate discrimination and inequality. Melissa, thank you very much for giving us your time. I know how busy you'll be. And, um, you know, it's a terrific inspiration to people who are, you know, sitting there thinking about how to move these big boulders in society. How do you... How do you push aside, you know, precedent and and um, you know and tradition to be, you know, create a more progressive place for the future of of New Zealanders? And you know, on behalf of us all, thanks very much for choosing to challenge, uh, and thanks very much for doing what you do. I know it's not easy; it's tough on friends and family. Um, and good on you for having the courage to do it. And we um, we look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks for your time. Sounds great. Thank you, Simon. And uh, I, I do. I really appreciate the ability to. Uh, to reflect a bit because I don't often do it. So this is, has been very satisfying for me as well. So happy international. Take care of yourself. <laughs> you too. Later. See you later. Bye-bye.